What's up agents, it's Patrick Wolf here. Today's video is going to be about the new raid that has come into the game. Uh, as we all know, it's very difficult, uh, but there are various ways that you can actually make it a lot easier than you might think. Uh, I've been running the certain uh, the phases with a pretty decent team, and we have found builds that actually really, really help um, your progress through killing the, the difficult bosses in the raid. So this video, I feel, is priority because for console players, the raid is extremely difficult, and I feel like it's very unfair to console players because of especially the whole world first thing. I feel like they were cheated out of it. I know players who were actually about to do it in within three hours time. Personally, I know them. Uh, they were contacting me, and they got delta errors throughout the entire uh, progression. They got three delta errors within an hour. Uh, they were about to finish the last boss. They were on the last boss within three hours of the raid coming online and they actually got dc'd half the team got dc'd so i feel like uh it's a bit it's a bit harsh especially for console players because it's very difficult to hit these bosses if you guys don't know i used to play console for in the division one for over a year almost two years i played division one with console and i know how hard it is to uh, shoot enemies who are moving really quickly now with the boss especially boomer so the boomer boss is very difficult to fight because you have to shoot little boxes in small areas uh, while he's actually moving and it's extremely difficult on console and it just keeps getting worse uh, as the bosses get more difficult and i feel like this build is going to be perfect for console players who need a bit of an extra hand i know it's not going to make it easy for you guys but this will make it a little bit easier uh, this build is focused on to help consoles now if you guys are pc users this build will do very well for you as well but this is the perfect the perfect build for console players who want to complete the raid so let's get into this build right here, guys. So as you can see, we're going to be using a uh, assault rifle build. So what you want to do is make sure you have the survivalist on. Uh, you, you guys need to try and uh, upgrade as much as you can. Uh, I need to decide what to what to do on mine. I haven't fully done it yet. I because I'm on PC, I use the headshot from the um, sharpshooter. So you're just going to want to make sure that your assault rifle damage is maxed out. And always make sure these four are, guys. Very important. You need, uh, while in cover, gain 10% skill cooldown reduction. Uh, reduce the chance you are critically hit by 20%. That's vital. So make sure you guys have A lot of people don't know that that's very strong. Also, this helps your group. And this is generating ammo. If you guys want to use a Seeker Mine, you can. But I'd rather use the Chem Launcher. So as long as you've got the Assault Rifle and these four out, that's what the most important thing. And if you guys, this is almost like a triage to help uh, heal your, your teammates. So it's very important that you guys do all of that. And then once you've got all that done, you're going to activate the survivalist. This is what we're going to be using. Uh, assault rifle build. We're going to be using the chatterbox as the secondary for obvious reasons for the blabbermouth tenant for the uh, RPM whenever you kill an enemy. So first of all, guys, this is going to be nine defense, seven electronics and five firearms. Now you're probably wondering... Well, people are saying that uh, you need a lot of damage for this raid. Yes, you do. But, guys, it's all about surviving. And damage is done by eight players. It, I feel like that's a bit of an oversight. People don't realize how strong skills can be. I've actually got a skill build that's very good for the raid, which I'm going to be bringing out very soon. And I'll show you guys exactly why it's so strong. Um, so, we're going to be running those stats. Now, we don't need too much firearms. We have plenty damage with this build. So first and foremost, guys, you need to make sure that you run ongoing directive console. It's not easy to uh, fire. If I was a console player, I would actually use a two piece ongoing directive at all times, not even just the raid weapon handling is incredible. It is an amazing, amazing uh, two piece guys vital for console players. If you guys are good at aiming, give this a try. You will see how much better your game will be after you put these two pieces on very, very underused. I feel in the community. Uh, and make sure you guys, you need, you, okay, you're going to need damage to elites on it. That's the problem. You need to find a, a decent role because ongoing directive likes to run electronics. So you guys need to make sure you get a decent role damage to elites. I got 25%, which is not great, but it's okay. Then the second piece of ongoing directive has got, uh, it's got skill power and cooldown reduction. That's perfect because you're going to be needing to pop your uh, chem launches a lot. So those, that's the two piece guys. Make sure you have that. Um, then the chest piece, this is a must have. You guys need this Fenris for obvious reasons. This is nothing new. Uh, I'm sure you guys know about this. Uh, make sure you run this 10% assault rifle damage, gives you extra damage. This has got health. Why is health more important than armor? 
Well, there's a certain part uh, where you're facing a guy called Dizzy, uh, where there's a plane in the middle and you guys are on two different sections. And then the plane lifts up. There's poison gas going around, guys. So health is actually very important for the raid. You need to have a lot of health to not only survive the gas, but it just it just helps because your armor will be taken out very quickly. So health is def. I would say at least 70k. You guys need to put your health. Don't overlook this. Um, the talents are very important. Is uh, unstoppable force. We need this uh, because you will find a lot of uh, ads around uh, like separate enemies. And once you kill them, you get a, a massive buff of weapon damage. And because we've got so much armor, it really does help. It's the best talent for now. And then obviously hard hitting damage to elites because they are pretty much all elites. So you guys want to be stacking that as well. So just on the mask and the chest piece, we've got and the yeah mask and chest piece, we've got quite a, a stack of damage to elites. So this is not a very new build, guys. But I just wanted to put this out there if you guys are just very confused on what to run for the raid. So this backpack, I got very lucky. So this is one of the most important things. You, you guys need to run two Gilligard. This gives you armor and 20% hazard protection. When you guys are fighting inside the airplane hangar, it's very important uh, to be hazard protective, protected because of the, the flame grenades or the gas, the poison. It, it, it gives you a lot of resistance from all of those things. So it's actually very important. So um, critical hit damage, uh, 4%. 10k health which is great 12k armor this is a beautiful piece uh, just another thing guys especially the uh, blinded these enemies will blind you especially the two dogs the robot dogs that you fight uh, lucy and buddy they will flash you out of cover now uh hazard protection actually remove well lessens the time that you're f faced by all these issues like being blinded or disrupted so it's very important to stack a bit of hazard protection then on the ropes is very important because we've just got enough for it and it gives us a lot of weapon damage. Here we go. We've only got five firearms. Guess what? You have a ton of damage. You don't need to worry about damage at all. We've got hardened because uh, we've got certain other pieces that contribute towards the, the health. I, I have tested this build, if you guys are wondering, and it's perfect for console. PC, it's strong as hell. I would actually run this for, cons for PC as well. But like I said before, the ongoing directive could be changed for something else if you guys are on PC. So we've got this. It's very important as well, guys. Don't overlook this. The Murakami Industries is a beautiful set. Uh, maybe on PC, you, instead of running ongoing directive, you could get a two-piece where you can get hazard protection. You start stacking it. Now I've got LMG. Don't worry about that. Try get assault rifle damage. Got health. Perfect. That's why our health is so high. Devastating. 5% weapon damage. Then again, making up for the loss of damage. Um... The thing about this build is, guys, is you don't need to worry too much about healing. Like, you could put clutch. Yeah, you're probably thinking, why not put clutch? Well, guys, it's not it's not as strong as you might think in the raid. Um, I would personally not use it because we've got the skill power. The skill power is better because you're going to get a lot of cooldown and you're going to have your chem launcher, which will give you a lot of healing. So, critical hits restore 20% health and repair 1% armor it's not as strong as you think it is it has been nerfed a bit it's still potent in pvp but for now um we don't really we don't really want to be using this right now uh if you guys can you could maybe spec your build towards it but it's not as strong as having good skill power because don't forget you don't want to be selfish in these raids a lot of people say oh you need to run clutch that's that's not 100 percent true uh, you can see the 20 percent health sounds very good but when you guys are healing with the chem launcher, trust me, you won't need it. Because you'll always have that initial health from the set pieces that we're using. So we, we make up for that. Plus, we have a lot of utility from our skills. Because skills are not useless. But besides the point of what everyone else says, they say that skills are useless. They are far from useless. They're very potent right now, especially in the raid. And you can help your teammates a lot. So it's almost like a little healer because you got almost a thousand skill power. So anyways, guys, in the knee pads, we have got armor. Uh, this is 9k armor. This is pretty good. Damage to elites again. Uh, so yeah, make sure you guys have two Gila Guard. It's very important. Murakami for the health. So this build works really well. Um, let's have a look at the stats quickly just to let you guys know. Everything's active. Uh, we've got Allegro on our on our assault rifle. Just, just to put it out there, make sure you guys use this uh, military P416. It's the best assault rifle in the game. Make sure you get one with a high gear score. I've got 499. Uh, don't worry about this. Uh, Allegro is probably the most important. So make sure you guys have that. And then on our, our stats, we're going to have crit chance. Now here's another thing, guys. is um, We don't want to be stacking too much crit chance on this build. So that's where clutch is also hindered. Uh, there's reasons for it, guys. I don't want to get involved too much. It's a bit complicated. But 
we got 5% crit chance. We're not focusing on crit for this build. If you guys want to use a, cl a clutch build, maybe to just constantly sap the enemy's uh, health and armor, use my drain build, my armor drain build that's on my channel. That'll be perfect for this. But this build is for console players and utility for your team in the raid. So I don't, I don't want, I just don't want you guys to think that I'm leading you down the wrong path. This is the right path if you guys are looking for a good build. So headshot damage is not bad. We could use a, a, the sharpshooter, but obviously we need the um because we can't hit headshots all the time because we're on console. If you know what I mean, we got to be doing the uh, survivalist. So weapon handling, 20%. That's great. You could stack it with some mods if you guys wanted to. We got a nice chunk of assault rifle damage. Damage to elites is 45%. That's not high because we've got other utility going. But you guys could stack it as much as you can. I would try to get it to a minimum of 30%. So armor on kill. Health on kill would be great. Uh, it's another thing you guys could maybe do. But I would just follow what I've done now. It's working for me so far. Because I have been testing this build throughout the raid. And it's pretty damn good. So we've got 15% skill cooldown reduction. Which is which is vital for this build. Uh, let's get into the skills. So you guys want to obviously use the chem launcher, the healer. Uh, what we've got here is a 17 second cooldown. So it's here's where all the utility comes in, guys. I've got an 8.7% radius, which is pretty strong. And uh, well, you see, it's a plus 8.7% radius. So if anyone says, oh, it's, don't worry about this, this is not really true, it, it, you get a lot more from it. Uh, I think we can, I think I can mod it actually. If you guys don't know, go to your, um, in your base of operations, go to the, uh, by the recalibration, you actually make these mods. Uh, you can get up to five ammo if you guys really want to spec into skill power but i wouldn't do that too much that's why I, at least we got that one little thing you get some purple mods for it and now what okay just to put this out there guys what i would normally use in a raid but we can't do it now because on pc i would be using this um tactician scout this allows you to see where all your enemies are and your players it, it kind of and it's always up. You can spec this to allow all your players to be seen and their enemies at all times, guys. It's like a 30-second cooldown. It's amazing. It lasts for 208 seconds. It's really good for raids because it just gives you an idea. It just allows your team to see what's going on a bit better, which is which is pretty good. But for this one, you guys can decide what you want to be using because it depends on how you want to be playing. Uh, I would recommend using the Reviver Hive. So I think a lot of people are using that. So just make sure you guys use that then. So that's what I would say. So... Anyways, guys, this is the build. Um, I hope it gives you guys a bit of more understanding in what I've, well, the way I've explained it and what the build was meant to do. It was to be a bit more easy for console players to hit those uh, tight hit boxes on the enemies in the raid. So anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like. Uh, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And I'll be bringing out a lot more raid builds, especially for uh, console and PC. Well, more, more specifically console, because I feel like you guys have been done wrong a bit. But anyways, I uh, hope you liked this video, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out, boys.